kind of music do the state officers listen to? So Malachi likes to listen to a lot of bluegrass and country. Um, maybe a little bit of like Christian mixed in there, but primarily just like bluegrass gospel country music. So I actually listen to a variety of different styles of music. Um, anyone who gets into the car with me knows that there's going to be something different playing. <laughs> um, I listen to artists ranging anywhere from Selena, who sings songs like Dreaming of You and uh, Como La Flor. Um, I listen to <laughs> like Garth Brooks and The Dance, um, anywhere from some like R&B artists even. Um, and then like a Dell. Um, so it doesn't even matter. Um, I listen to a lot of different styles of music. Literally when we go on car rides, you'll see like 50 messages in our group chat with the most random songs to play. Honestly, it's true. Really <laughs> <laughs> What's the greatest lesson you've learned as a state officer? So for me, way back whenever we were doing base camp training, which was really introducing a lot of the concepts that we still hold as state officers, they repeatedly told us to be intentional. So for me, that's really one of the greatest lessons that I've learned is that no matter what I do, I'm supposed to be intentional and value what I do. For me, the greatest lesson that we, I've learned this year is to expect nothing and be grateful for everything. You can never plan what's going to happen. There's a lot of things that just happen out of the blue. So expect nothing and just be grateful for every single opportunity. What's your favorite thing about being a state officer? For me, ever since the beginning of the year, I've been able to connect with and meet so many different members from literally all over North Carolina. Like Zan and I traveled to the coast and then I've gone all the way into the furthest west part of North Carolina in the mountains. And you just meet so many different and unique people and it's been pretty interesting to make friends along the way. Uh, my favorite part would also be the people, um, but it's, it's not even just the members, it's the people that we meet, whether it's stakeholders or sponsors or guests or parents or different ag teachers, my teammates, um, state staff, um, state officers from other states. There's so many people that we've met this year and they really make it worth it. Why are Megan and I so good at karaoke? So it's a long answer to this question. Malachi and I have had countless hours of practice and training in karaoke. All we do, honestly, at this point is sing. Long car rides to chapter visits allow for those practices and we've had lots of them. What is your safe place? My safe place comes in a variety of different areas, but wherever I have the opportunity to just sing, relax, and hang out with my friends is probably my safe place. My safe place is my car, whether it's like just driving down the road on a long trip or singing to the radio, it's my safe place. I do have a few uh, different safe places, but one that comes to mind instantly is a lake that's near my home. It's somewhere that I can go um, when I have a lot of my mind or I want to uh, set goals for myself or do some reflecting. Um, it is definitely an area that um, I feel safe in. And for me, my safe place really isn't in a physical location. Um, it's more of really for me talking to my family and people that I'm close with, even if it's me walking my dog down the road. I just feel safe around the people that I'm closest with. So my safe place is probably sitting at my mama's kitchen table, eating one of her pecan pies, because I never feel safer than when I'm doing that. Um, my safe place would be surrounded by good people in a good place with good food, sort of like Malachi. Um, my favorite place would have to be home, uh, somewhere in Samson County. So one thing that I enjoy seeing uh, when going to different FFA programs is just how different each program is. So I can be in one program and be able to hold a bunny uh, that's close to 20 pounds or in another location and get to check out a really cool greenhouse. So where I, wherever I am, there's different uh, types of things there and there are different types of people, um, which is really, really cool. One thing I love about traveling to a whole bunch of different FFA programs is seeing the different traditions that they have. We had the opportunity to go to South Rowan and do their green hand chug and then uh, we also went to Northfield Nor where they have state officers sign their walls and those are just two examples but every single chapter has a different tradition and that's been super cool to see. One of the coolest things we get to do as state officers is travel all over the state and that means we get to see all the different kinds of North Carolina agriculture. Megan and I had the opportunity to travel to Curry Tuck in August and see their geography and their kind of agriculture based around the ocean and wetlands. 
a couple months ago, the team actually also went to Ash County and we got to see some really awesome examples of agriculture down there. We got to see Christmas trees and learn that Ash County is the biggest Christmas tree producing county in North Carolina and the second biggest in the United States. So for me, the biggest thing that I've taken away from this year is the relationships that I've made with people. I know that one day I'm going to be an ag teacher and I've had the opportunity to be some really cool ag teachers and um, just, just to know that I'm making those connections with them and I know that FFA and Ag Ed is a family and um, that one day I know that I'm going to be able to rely on them and it's, it's, it's good to know that they're good people in Ag Ed. For me, one of the things that I'll take away from this experience being a state officer is really the process that goes into planning workshops. So me being an Ag Ed major, I'm going to be planning a lot of lesson plans here in the future. So I think really one of the tangible things I'll take away is the process that goes into facilitation because it's actually pretty close to the process that goes into lesson plans. One of the things I'll be taking away from my year as a state officer is all of the skills that I've gained, such as public speaking and communication. I know we do a lot of work with communication, with one-on-one, -on -one, and that'll help me a lot being a future teacher to connect with my students and also connect with my peers. This year, I've learned a lot about advocating for myself, advocating for the things that I'm passionate about within FFA, and in the future, I'm excited to advocate for um, other things outside of this organization and to continue to advocate for myself and others as well. One thing that I'll take with me from state office is just the people that I've met, they Y'all have inspired me in a lot of different ways. My major is agricultural education, and I was actually considering changing it for a while to horticulture, but just the experience of this year, meeting people and seeing that young people have passion and just being able to work with young people, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to continue uh, with my degree in Ag Ed and just carry that inspiration with me. It won't stop. <laughs> So the skill that I'm going to take with me after state office and use it probably the most would be the adaptability. Um, whether we've been in the middle of the woods or in a big executive office building, um, we've had to adapt to our environment, the people, how we speak, how we act, how we dress, um, and just the adaptability and being able to find a comfort zone outside of our normal comfort zone. So I think that's what I'm going to take with me most after state office.